Hey guys, welcome to my video on variable creation and variable transformation. What we're going to do here is I'm going to show you a couple of things that econometricians often have to do to their data to get it in a form that's more useful. And then I'm also going to introduce you for the first time to the linear model, which is R's command for basic regression. All right, so here we are in R. I've already specified my libraries. I'm using the Wooldridge library like I have been in my last couple of videos. And I'm using a new library I haven't shown you yet called dummies, which will help us with variables, uh, with creating dummy variables. If you don't yet have the dummy command or the dummies library, you can do something like install packages and then enter dummies into that function. You'll be good to go. I am going to be using the WagePan data set. And I'm just starting off by creating the YouTube my own label for a data set. I'm calling it YouTube data. I could call it anything I want to. I could call it meat lovers pizza or stranger things. I can call it whatever I want to. I'm just calling it YouTube data. It is data I'm building for my YouTube channel. Uh, so I am just setting it equal to the WagePan data set, which is part of the Wooldridge library. Let's run all this stuff, and see where we're at. Okay, we got this stuff. Now this data set doesn't actually need much work. It's already got everything broken up into dummy variables. We've already got log of wages. We've already got squared experience. Like it's already got lots of the variable transformations we might be interested in. Uh, but I wanted you to be able to go through this using the same data I am so that you can practice. Uh, because, you know, when you have more raw data, you want to be able to know that what you're doing is correct. So one thing we might be interested in is I've got this log of wages. Where was it? Not way over there. L wage. It's the natural log of people's wages. And I might be interested in, instead of getting the natural log of their wages, what if I just wanted to have their wages? This data set does not have a wage variable. Let's start with. Uh, by the way, this little pound sign or hashtag or whatever you want to call it is for putting in comments. These comments won't run in the code. They're just here for our benefit. So what if I wanted to turn log wage into regular wage? Well, that command is pretty straightforward. Uh, I just need to create a new variable. Let's see, YouTube data dollar sign wage now why do i have to say youtube data dollar sign wage if i don't put in the youtube data part it's going to save my new variable but it's not going to attach it to this data set in order to have it be lumped in with all of this information i need to tell r where to put the data which is here so wage well anytime you're transforming a logarithm back to normal the exp function, uh, which is basically e to the whatever your input is, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to say exp of YouTube data or sign l wage. Now let's see what this does. Let's go back to my YouTube data and take a look. At the far right is where new variables come out. I've got this, where new wage numbers not log of wages, but just the transformed regular wages of these different people. Uh, by the way, I have no idea what their units are. So. Okay. Now, what would have happened if I had forgotten to specify those YouTube data dollar signs? Let's see what would happen if I did that. Well, first thing, is it doesn't know where L wage is. We need this one absolutely for sure. YouTube data dollar sign L wage. What happens if I forget it on my new wage? Well, I uh, R stores this separate object wage over here, and it is completely separate from the rest of my data, which can be good or can be bad, but in my case, I'm trying to keep all my data together, so I'm going to call it bad. Uh, 
So if you forget to put your dollar sign on your new variable, R will still create it, but it's not going to create it in your data set. To create it in the data set, you want this command, where it tells you specifically put this new variable in the YouTube data. All right, so there's one kind of transformation we could do. Uh, we could do something else where we just create an entirely new variable. Uh, for instance, this data set has a variable for, uh, let's see, they've got experience measured in years and they've got hours per year that people work. So what if I wanted to get their experience measured in hours? So I could say something like experience in hours as a variable. I see, ooh, almost forgot to put it in my data set though. YouTube data, dollar sign, experience hours. And remember this symbol, I forgot to mention this. I mentioned it in previous videos. This symbol is basically your equals sign. Equals is saved for logical statements. This less than and a dash assigns a value. So I'm setting experience hours equal to YouTube data, dollar sign experience times YouTube data dollar sign hours. And when I do that, let's run that also just for good measure. It comes out over here and tells me approximately how many hours everyone in this data set has worked. So there's a couple ways we can go about manipulating our data already. One, we can transform things. Uh, we can change logs back to normal numbers or, you know, whatever function we want to do. We can also just create entirely new variables. In this case, I did an interaction term where I combined two things. How many years of experience, how many hours per year will come out to total hours of experience. Now, what if instead of all this, what if I want to drop some variables? Uh, Oftentimes, this isn't very important unless your data set is so big your computer's having a hard time. Uh, but sometimes there's just stuff you don't really need in your data set. So, for instance, what if I thought that I didn't need the poor health variable? Uh, let me pick a couple of variables. I'll say poor health variable and whatever these are, try and trade maybe. Yeah, it doesn't even tell me. So whatever those are. Let's say I can want to get rid of those three variables. So I want to drop for health track and trad. What would I do with that? I would create I would I can either create a new data set like YouTube data two or or something like that. I'm just going to replace my YouTube data. I'm gonna say YouTube data is signed a value it's equal to a subset there's a new command for us subset of the youtube data comma and now i can put options in here now we haven't looked at the subset command so let's take a quick look help with our subset command What are some options we have on this thing? So I'm gonna plug in X, I've already done that. I've told it to subset my YouTube data. And then I can do different options where I can tell it to keep rows. I can tell it to remove missing values and turn them false. I can specify which columns of our, of our data frame we're keeping. Yeah, so we're trying to drop three variables. So let's do the columns one. We're going to use this select command. We're going to indicate columns to select from a data frame. And what's that look like? Uh, when you look at these documentations, you can always scroll down and look, and there's usually some kind of example that tells you how the syntax works. So in this example, they were taking a subset of some air quality data, and then they would type in their options, select equals something. Obviously, they have other options going on in here. Let's not worry about that. 
but I'm going to say select equals, and I'm going to list the variables I either want to keep or I can list the variables I want to drop. Now, given that I've got a whole ton of variables and I'm only trying to drop three of them, I'm going to show you just how to, to drop a few regular ones. I'm going to put a negative on here, which is going to delete the ones in my list. I'm going to concatenate a list of for health, trad, and trad. And let's see, I just highlighted it. I hit control enter, which is the same as running it. Oops, I actually ran it twice. And look, the second time I ran it, it didn't even find it. Let's go look. Is there a poor health variable? No. Is there a tra or trade variable? No, those are gone. I was able to use this subset command to get rid of those three variables. This negative meant I got rid of them. If I had instead run the whole thing, let's do it. Let's run the whole thing except for that line. Let's come back to this one. What if I did it without the negative? What would be left of my data? Just those three variables. That is a little something on how to focus on what we're interested in. Here, let me run it back to the way I wanted it. Okay. We've created new variables, we've transformed data, we've dropped variables. Let's also do dummy commands. As an econometrician, I love me some good dummy variables. Uh, this is the part where we needed the dummies library. Uh, I'm going to create an object. What if instead of just having a, a variable for education, which has years, like zero through 16 or whatever it is, what if instead I wanted to create dummy variables for each level of education? So I can more carefully control for the effect of each additional year of education. Well, that's pretty easy. I can do something like this. Education dummies or edu dummies. And again, I can give whatever name I want to in here. I could call it popcorn and R will still treat it the same. And I'm gonna assign this thing a value equal to dummy of let's see my adult YouTube data dollar sign education. Now what does that command do? Let's take a look. Let's say view educ dummies Look at this, it gives me dummy variables for each of the levels of education in my data set. And so I could include this whole list of education dummies. And for each person, it will tell me, let's see, this isn't a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 year person. This is a 14 year person. And so on. So with no further ado, let's introduce our first regression. What if I wanted to run a regression? of log wage or wait let's use our real wage we already created of a wage on education and experience and experience squared okay lots of endogeneity problems there let's ignore that until later in the class we're just getting the mechanics of running a regression uh so i'm going to say Say wage, wage reg one. That'll be my first regression. And I'm going to set it equal to LM. There's a new function, it stands for linear model. And I'm going to say YouTube data dollar sign wage. So that's my dependent variable. It goes first. And I'm going to put this little tilde or squiggly mark. It's right under your escape key above tab. Uh, and then I'm going to tell it what to regress my wage on. YouTube data dollar sign education plus YouTube data 
dollar sign experience plus YouTube data dollar sign experience squared. Now when I run this, oh man, I can't even spell my own data. Let's try that again. Now, when I run this, let's see what wage reg one looks like. All right, it gave me coefficients. It gave me these three things, predicting wages. And I'm actually gonna get you off there, unfortunately. Uh, my next video, we will explore this regression command more. So, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing. And good luck.